everyone! This is Christy B. I'm here to show you my game, Twin Palms. Uh, Twin Palms is a trick-taking card game that is played over a series of rounds. Now, depending on how many players you have playing the game, you will have different amount of rounds as shown on the round tracker. One of the unique parts of Twin Palms is that it has three different suits. It has the palm trees, the dolphins, and the sunglasses. Now, when you play, you will choose one of four modes to play. Easy, normal, advanced, or extreme. Now, depending on which one you pick, you will choose the suits that apply to said mode. For example, easy, you will only be playing with the palms. In normal mode, you will play with the palms and the dolphins. And in both the advanced and the extreme mode, you will be playing with all three. And today, I'll be teaching you normal mode. Let's get started. All right, to get set up, uh, you will place the round tracker uh, where everybody can see it, and then also place the stingray on the first round, because uh, that's the round you'll start in. And after you're done with that, separate the sand dollars into three different piles. There's ones, fives, and twenty-fives. These represent points in the game. Give each player a reference card, and on top of that, you'll be giving them bid cards, and betting cards. The betting cards look like this in the front. The bid cards look like this. In addition to giving these to the players, you will also give everyone two sand dollars to start with. And since we're playing in normal mode, you will be using the palms and the dolphins from the deck, and the sunglasses you can just put back in the box. And lastly, I think it's fun to give the person who last visited the beach the first player token, which is a shark. All right, let's move on to gameplay. Okay, each round there are four phases. Number one, dealing the cards. Number two, bidding and betting. Number three, playing tricks. And number four, scoring. So the first thing that you do is deal out 10 cards to each player. Um, 10, 10, here's our 10. Then while you're looking at your cards, and I'm gonna kind of go through this with this in our background, right in the back of our mind. So you're looking at all these different numbers, all these different things, and going, what? I'm not really sure what to do here. The first thing to reference is your card. Now, since you'll be playing two cards at a time during the played and tricks phase, you will see it just like poker, there's a hierarchy. If you have a pair, it will always take the trick over no pairs. And then within pairs and within no pairs, if you have two palms, that would take the trick over any of these, two dolphins take the trick over any of these, and so on and so forth. Now, one of the magical things I believe is um, with twin palms is that you can do a lot of hand manipulation. So the first thing I look for are up here, if there's any two strong, possibly strong cards that could take a trick. That's pretty high up there. The highest card in the deck is a 10, so a seven's not too far off. Then I see that I have some threes that might take a trick as well. Then going to that second ranking in my hand, I see that I have two tens. That might take a trick. Now with this, I mean, depending on who's playing what type of cards, this is an easy, I'm not gonna take this trick. And this one is a, we don't really know. During the game though, it's not always gonna play out like this. So there might be more hand manipulation where you go, wow, I don't wanna take this trick, so I'm gonna swap these two out. So during the game, you have the ability and the flexibility to try to hit your bid. Now, let's go ahead and talk about your bid. I'm looking at this hand and trying to determine how many tricks I will take. I have the options from zero bid all the way up to five. Since there's 10 cards dealt to everyone, there will be five total max tricks. Um, so looking at this in the hierarchy, I am leaning towards, I think, I think I could pull off three tricks. So I'm gonna find my 
three bid. And on the card, just to show you a little bit of the layout, you're bidding three. If you get that exactly, here's your payout. If you don't get three, either going under or going over, you will get one point per trick, one sand dollar. So what do you do with this card? Instead of just showing everybody, you will be placing it down in front of you, just like everybody else. So they will pick theirs and they will pick theirs. Okay, now that our bids are set, we're gonna be looking to see if we want to make a bet on our hand. Now, betting is another way to gain points in the game, and there are three different types of bets. The first is a zero bet. This basically means that you're not that confident in this bid of three that you gave. So yeah, I'm not gonna bid or bet any other of my precious sand dollars that are here, because these are points. Now, if you think that you nailed your bid, you're absolutely 100% gonna get this, or 95%, then you'll wanna do a max bet. Now, what's a max bet? The first thing you'll do is you will reference the round tracker. The round tracker's number is what the max bet you can make is. So for this one, if I did a max bet, I would be saying I would bet this one precious sand dollar that I have. A half bet is actually not applicable to the first round because it is the round number cut in half rounded down. So one cut in half rounded down is zero. So you don't have to look at that for your first hand. Now later, such as in round two, if you did a half bet, in round two, that would mean you would bet one sand dollar. So for me, looking at this, I'm really not that confident in this because these aren't that strong. I'm going to go ahead and opt to bet zero. And then the other players will choose theirs as well. Also placing these face down. And then what will happen is on the count of three, everyone will reveal their bids and their bets. Now, I only have two hands, so I'm gonna try to do it quick. Huh. And this one over here. <laughs> okay, so we know what our bid was and what our bet is. We can go ahead and put the bet card back in our hand because it's zero. They also bet zero, put that back in their hand. And now we see that they're trying to hit a bid of zero. Now, I wanna stop and talk about bidding zero. This is the only bid that is unique. All the others have a it, some sort of payout for the tricks that you earn. A zero bid is an all or nothing. You either take zero tricks, gaining you five sand dollars, or you get nothing. So this is a risky one, but if your hand is really not great, this could be a good bid. All right, now going back over here, this player bid three and she was really confident, so she's betting max. She can still put this bet card back and place her sand dollar right in that nice little lovely umbrella, indicating that she is betting one extra sand dollar. And if she gets exactly three, she'll get a one-to-one -one payout meaning we would grab another sand dollar from the supply and put it right there. Unfortunately though, if let's say she only got two or she got four, this just goes away. But she'll still get her two, if she got two tricks, uh, two sand dollars for this. All right, so it's time to play our first trick since we're the shark. Sometimes it's really hard to lead out because you don't know what they're going to try to do. The only indicator I have here is they're not going to try to take any tricks. We are battling. So she has a bit of three, as do I. So I think I'm going to want to start strong. A lot of people don't. They might start by sloughing. I'm going to see if I can take the first trick, but not with my highest pair of palms. We'll see how that plays out. So I'm going to play those to the center of the table. And we see here that this is a pair of palms. Well, that's good, good so far. All right, so they don't want to take any. So they are playing 
a mixed no pair. Going back to the reference, we see that that's the lowest that they could play. So, so far, we're winning the trick. It's looking good. And then this player is going to play, oh, what's that? This symbol indicates that it's a wild. So the player, once playing the wild card, will immediately say what the number is. So if that player says it's a 10, they have the highest pair of twin palms because the tens are the highest. And I'm gonna guess since their bid was three and they have a bet on it, they're gonna call that a 10. So with this being a pair of tens, we and this being a pair of threes, the tens take it. So she won her first trick. All she does is take all of the cards, place them in a pile in front of her, and then she becomes the next person to start the next play. Alrighty, so we played out all of our tricks and here's what the end of a round will look like. So let's go ahead and start with ours first. We bid three, we only got one trick. We didn't bet anything, so we're not gonna lose anything. So that's a good thing. We didn't get it exactly, that seven payout would have been really nice, but we do get one sand dollar per trick. And since we did get one, we get an extra sand dollar. We'll put that in two with the other ones. They're gonna hang out together. Going to the person on the left, they bid zero. If they were able to get not take this trick, they would have gotten five points. But otherwise, like I said before, the bid of zero is scary because even if you get that one trick, you get nothing. So they got nothing for the round. Now coming over here, she bid three. She got her bid exactly. And on the card, that means she gets seven. So we'll give her seven to put with her other sand dollars up here. And also don't forget, she bid or bet an extra one. So she gets one more because she bet one. Now, after all of this scoring is done, we will reset the cards, take them back, take back everybody's bid cards. The shark will move in clockwise, so they will become the new first player. And then you'll move the round tracker stingray to round two. Okay, now I wanna talk with y'all about tying in this game. Here's an example of a tie in a two player game. They both have a 10 and they both have a nine. So what happens? The trick is actually taken out of play completely and given to neither player, and whoever let out the last trick will lead out again. So let's take these back for a moment and look at if this was a three-player game setup. This person played a 0-1, and by the way, this is the absolute lowest pair you can play to try to slough off. So they're definitely not wanting to take this trick. However, this player played a 10-9, and then this player wanted to be smart and stick this player with the trick because they played a 10-9 as well. And as we know in the two player game, these two, they don't go out of the game, but they basically are no longer in competition for the trick. They cancel each other out. So who gets stuck with it? That lowest one zero. And that's how tying works. Alrighty, everyone, I would like to lastly talk about the four different modes. Easy is easy because you're only using the palm suit whenever you're playing the game. Um, it is also only for two players. Usually uh, that's the way we start children in on playing the game. Uh, normal, we already went over. So let's go ahead and talk about advanced and extreme, the final two. So here's an example of a three player game in advanced. The first thing you'll notice is that the sunglasses suit has come into play. For both an advanced and extreme, you will add in all three suits to the deck. The hierarchy on advanced is very similar to normal, um, except you will see there's an added sunglasses section and sunglasses section. The sunglasses also play into the mixed just the same as normal. So in this example of the three player game, it would be this player that would win because they have a pair of tens and that is the highest pair. 
Now, let's look at the hierarchy in extreme. Extreme is extreme for a reason. It actually matters what suits you play, especially when you're looking at the mixed pairs and the mixed no pairs. There is a not only hierarchy overall, but there is a hierarchy within the mixed. So a palm and a dolphin would beat out a palm and sunglasses. Same, a palm and sunglasses would beat out a dolphin and sunglasses. So using that knowledge, let's relook at this. In, as a reminder, advanced mode, the tens won it because they were the highest. But now we're in extreme, so every card counts. First off, we can immediately nix out the tens because they're the lowest. It is a dolphin and sunglasses, so they're not gonna take the trick. Looking over here, they're a palm and sunglasses. That five is also not gonna take the trick. Guess who does? That lowest number. Why? Because in extreme, you can see that a palm tree and a dolphin, if that's the pair, this one would actually win the trick. Alrighty, well, that's all you need to know for Twin Palms. Uh, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out, and I really hope you enjoy playing my game.